All right, what's up guys? Welcome to episode two of the Muscle Growth Series here on LegendaryTraining.net YouTube channel. In the last episode, we learned that mechanical tension was the key driver for hypertrophy of a muscle. Essentially, receptors on the muscle tissue pick up a tension stimulus that sends a downstream response, which ultimately results in growth of muscle. In other words, we've learned that muscle growth occurs when the right signals are picked up by the body. So then the question becomes, well, what exactly are those signals, and how do we get them? We can't just say weightlifting. That's a little too general. We need a more specific answer. Well, it turns out that the signal the body wants to see to build muscle is a novel overload stimulus. Let's break that down a little bit. Let's start with novelty. You need novelty because your body simply won't adapt to a stimulus that isn't disruptive. If you're trying to get a darker skin tan, you need exposure to more UV rays than you're used to. If you've been taking one scoop of pre-workout for 12 weeks straight, it's probably not doing much for you anymore. If your body gets too used to a stimulus, it ceases to provide any disruption and your body has no reason to adapt. But before you go completely changing your workout routine every time you go to the gym, it's important to understand that novelty exists on a spectrum. Okay. Just because you've done something one time does not mean that it's no longer novel. Think about the first time you tried squatting. You were probably sore for a week. Suffice to say that one squatting session barely moved the novelty needle at all. So we know that novelty is needed to see growth, but what about overload? Overload is the critical second part of the equation. After all, running a marathon is very novel, but it wouldn't provide much growth. Moving on to overload. So how do we define overload? Well, for bodybuilding purposes, overload needs to have two important criteria. Okay, the first aspect of overload is that the weight that you're using for a given exercise needs to be at least 30% of your one rep max. In other words, if you could squat 300 pounds, squatting with 90 pounds or less probably isn't going to trigger much growth. The second aspect of overload is that the set should be taken to within five reps of failure. Now this number is somewhat arbitrary, but we know that the closer you train to failure, the stronger the signal that's picked up by the receptors is. Now most of you guys know this intuitively, right? I mean, if you could complete 12 reps on an exercise, but you stop at less than seven, you probably didn't get a whole lot out of that set. To sum everything up, a novel overload stimulus is needed to signal muscle growth. The stimulus must have an element of novelty to it. In other words, you aren't maximally adapted, and the two components of overload must be present, 30% or greater of your one rep max, and within five reps of failure. These are the conditions that must be met to see muscle growth. In the next video, we'll look at how these ideas can be practically applied to your training. Guys, if you're interested in a more in-depth discussion about these ideas, check out my book Growth Signal, available on Amazon in Kindle or paperback. It's also available on my website in a PDF form. Links for both will be down in the description below. That's it for today. Subscribe to see any future content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.